So my name is Marcus Tripp. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Spoon Guru. We are a food search and discovery platform and our mission is to help people find suitable foods for whatever dietary preference or health objective they may have. So how does personalization drive revenues for retailers and e-commerce uh, companies? Personalization provides a much better experience for users and for partners because uh, it allows them to, to build highly curated experiences and highly personalized services. And, and if you provide a more relevant experience, then you know, your, the impact on your business is significant. And that's the main benefit of personalization we see for our partners. So you would like to know what other trends we're seeing in food personalization. Um, we see a huge uh, drive towards what we call hyper personalization uh, or the segment of one where technology can be used to provide highly curated experiences down to the individual, which is something new. Um, AI technology has been AI based technology has been discussed a lot. Personalization has been one of the buzzwords in the industry, but it's now becoming a reality. It's what consumers expect to see and uh, the industry is responding. We are seeing uh, similar trends in other areas outside of retail. You know, YouTube is one example or Spotify or Netflix where um, the service is uh, the service provider provides a highly personalized experience based on your consumption and we are seeing similar trends now within retail what will be the trends in the next couple of years when it comes to food personalization we think it's it's going to become a mass market proposition you know we will see personalization across the board across all channels not just online but across all channels where highly personalized experiences become a reality you know you the through implicit and explicit interactions with the retailer um, the retailer will be able to respond to my individual requirements much more effectively whether i'm at home or in a physical retail environment whether i'm ordering stuff on the go um, or online the experience will be highly curated uh, it will be a personalized shopping experience you know the based on my my preferences um, and my interactions with the retailer What's the uh, technology driver behind food personalization? It's really AI has come into its own. AI and machine uh, learning now enables um, the crunching of huge uh, data sets. And uh, it, it enables us and our partners to identify patterns within huge uh, sets of unstructured data. And that it really is uh, the fundamental building block to drive personalized experiences. What other insights have we gained by through running Spoon Guru? So we see we are a consumer centric business. You know, our mission is to help people find suitable foods uh, for whatever dietary preference or, or health objective they have. And we represent the consumer um, in, in this ecosystem. We build technologies that empower consumers and uh, those technologies are licensed by our business partners that allows us to understand trends and it understand it allows us to see what consumers expect um, and uh, we've seen a huge push towards health health is a huge topic you know it's a global trend people want to be healthier they want to make better choices um, but they're also frustrated by the complexity when it comes to finding healthier foods and that is where we position ourselves as a service provider and uh, that is one of the huge trends we've identified, you know, through our interactions with consumers. And we take that knowledge back to our business partners and we take that knowledge back to our internal teams to build fantastic technology solutions that really help consumers accomplish their goals, specifically around health. So how can this technology be used to, uh, to build a consumer trust and build a loyal customer base? So people have very specific requirements. Some of them may, may be based on a, on a medical condition or maybe based on, a, on a, a religious requirement. They only want to eat uh, halal foods or kosher foods. And, uh, and some are based on lifestyle choices and some are based on, on health objectives. And um, people need help. It's as simple as that. You know, they, people need help to, to go beyond the marketing claims and packages and people uh, demand transparency. People want to know what they put into their bodies and um, and they want to be able to rely uh, on the information that's given to them. In some instances, there is um, there's zero, mar zero margin for error. If you have a medical condition, if you are affected by allergy, you can't afford to get it wrong once because somebody will go into anaphylactic shock and that would be horrendous. Um, but even for a vegan, you know, or somebody who only eats specific foods for religious reasons, you have a right, you know, to know what you put into your body and you have a right uh, 
to know that the products that are being recommended to you comply with your dietary requirements. We we published a study a couple of months ago that showed that 76% of people with a specific dietary requirement often uh, and frequently but unintentionally consume foods that don't uh, 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 that don't uh, comply with their diet. And we think in this day and age, it's simply no longer acceptable. And that's the use case we are trying to solve through the application of technology. Uh, technology, especially AI-based technologies, allow you to provide highly accurate um, uh, experiences and that in itself wins consumers trust. So do I know what percentage of retailers use um, personalized uh, personalization technology to provide better experiences? We know uh, to some extent personalization has been used to drive CRM activities and loyalty programs but we are really hoping to be able to see um, next generation personalization experiences become the reality. Most retailers offer some form of personalization but it really does not support the individual user down to um, every minute requirement that person may have so and we, we will see a huge shift and we'll see huge um, um, uh, adoption increase when it comes to personalization technologies over the next few years because again it's driven by consumer demand it's what people want it's, it's what people are starting to see from other um, industries and they will expect the same to happen within retail do our partners see uh, um, an advantage in the market? Yes, we absolutely believe so. We, we see our partners use the technology we give them as a huge point of differentiation. Um, and it gives them an advantage. It gives them a competitive edge because they can provide better experiences for their shoppers. And they see uh, a direct impact on their bottom line and on their top line. They see higher conversion rates, they see higher acquisition rates, they see higher uh, customer satisfaction, uh, they see increased loyalty, retention and um, uh, they see higher net promoter scores so yes they we are we are touching many kpis by being able to provide more adequate experiences so the question is how can on online retailers tap into this market um well there's there's two ways really they can either try to build something uh like this themselves to build it in-house but that's probably not the most uh uh, time effective solution or they can team up with a service provider that specializes in this area and we see a huge uh, move towards the latter we see huge companies large corporations large international uh, corporations embrace startup culture and uh, team up with service providers that provide those type of experiences mm -hmm.